Welcome to the 30s Guide. My name is Prisca Jordan and in today's video I'm giving you 12 do's and don'ts for dressing a curvy hourglass body type. One of the best things I've done for my personal style in my 30s is recognizing that my curvy hourglass body is not what designers are designing clothing for. So when I see a model walking down the runway wearing a certain type of clothing and she has a straight body frame, it's not going to look the same on me. It's not going to flatter the areas that I want to flatter and it's going to disguise areas that I want to draw more attention to. So this is a really empowering thing to realize what a curvy hourglass body looks good in and what it really doesn't. Now you'll see that I have my measuring tape here because to know whether you have a curvy body or a more straight frame, you need to look at your measurements and the proportions between those. So you need to know your shoulder measurement, your bust measurement, your natural waist, and finally your hips. It can be difficult to measure your shoulders, but the other three measurements you can do on your own. I'm not going to get too in depth on measurements and how to determine your body type because that's not this video, but if that's a video you would like me to make, then leave a comment down below and I can do that. But basically I can tell you that my shoulder width is about 44 inches. My bust measurement is 36, my natural waist is 29 inches, and my hips are 39 inches. So really we're looking at the proportions between the bust, natural waist, and hips, which is 36, 29, 39. And that is what determines the hourglass shape. The natural body shape for a woman is more curvy. However, with a curvy or hourglass body, you're going to have a more tapered in waist so that measurement of your natural waist is going to be drastically different than your bust measurement and your hip measurement. With a straight body frame, you're not going to have as much contrast in that waist measurement. And that's all I'm going to say about these measurements. So if you already know that you are a curvy or hourglass body, then let's get right into the do's and don'ts. I'll let you in on a secret before we get started. The last two do's and don'ts are mastery level of dressing an hourglass body. So make sure you watch to the end. Number one, if you have a curvy body type, do wear wrap dresses and wrap blouses. This type of garment is going to flatter the natural shape of your body, your silhouette. I'm wearing one as an example today and see how it nips me in at the waist, which also allows for smooth curves of my hips. I know, wrap dresses for curves, groundbreaking. Um, well, they're showing a lot of florals right now, so I was thinking I could florals? do Florals? For spring, groundbreaking. But in contrast, do not wear boxy tees, boxy sweaters, and boxy dresses. Even if it's trendy, you like the pattern, you like the color, it's not going to flatter your beautiful body. So stick to something like a wrap style, which is going to accentuate your curves. Number two, do wear sleeveless or longer short sleeves as opposed to do not wear baby doll sleeves, those teeny tiny sleeves. Let me show you what that's doing. When you wear a sleeveless top, it's going to allow for a longer, leaner look of your arm. When you wear a baby doll top, it's similar to the effect of a capri pant. It's cutting you off at your widest point and visually that's probably the worst place to cut off the length of your arm. This dress is an example of a sleeveless top and see how it's creating a nice long column of my arm. And I'll also show an example here of a longer sleeve sweater tee that I have. And I just find this to be so much more attractive on my body than something that has a very short sleeve. Number three, if you have an hourglass body, do wear cropped jackets and tops, but do not wear tunic length. Now, if you saw my previous video about creating better proportions with your clothing, there is a rule in style called the rule of thirds. And that states that a one third, two third proportion looks more visually appealing to the eye than a one half, one half. When you wear a tunic length top, it's going to create that one half, one half visual. And that's not very flattering on anyone, but specifically for someone with an hourglass body, it's not going to flatter the unique curves that you have. 
The great thing about crop blouses and jackets is that it's going to create that one third, two third will of thirds visual appeal, but it's also going to accentuate your waist. And how many times am I going to say accentuate your waist in this video? The limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. That brings us to number four, which goes hand in hand with the length of your top. Let's say you do have a longer shirt. How can we fix this to flatter a curvy body? Do tuck in your blouse. I know that some people don't really like this because it feels a little bit older, but I'm here to tell you when you have a blouse that cuts you off at the widest parts of your hips, it ages you, it doesn't flatter your body, it really just doesn't look good for the rule of thirds. So trust me, try tucking in your blouse and see if nipping in that waist really does flatter you. Let me show you an example of a casual office look. And this is what it looks like when the blouse is hanging out. And this is what it looks like when it's tucked in. Not only does it look more chic, but it's also just more visually appealing. You see the top one third is the lighter blue and the bottom two thirds is the darker blue. Just by tucking in the blouse, we improve the style of this outfit 100%. After you've tucked in your blouse, rule number five is to add a belt to your natural waist. This is going to accentuate it, my favorite phrase, accentuate your waist, and that's going to create some visual appeal to your outfit so it's not boring. What you don't want to do is neglect your waist because I think for personal style, adding this element just creates more visual appeal to the outfit as a whole. So take a look at this previous outfit I had. Now, I know that monochromatic dressing, one long column of color, was very popular the last couple of years, but I don't think it has a ton of style. Just by adding a contrasting belt to this outfit that correlates with the color of the shoes, it is going to add a lot more style to this very simple daytime office look. So that's a really good example for jeans, but if you're interested in adding a belt to dresses, mini, midi, maxi dresses, then check out this video I have linked in the corner. And that's going to show you how to accentuate your waist when you're wearing a dress by adding a belt. Moving away from the top half of the body to the bottom half, rule number six is do try wearing high-waisted skirts and pants. And what's interesting about the millennial group, people who are in their 30s right now, is that the older millennials are so into the low-waisted and mid-waisted jeans and the later millennials are so into the high-waisted jeans. And I'm here to tell you, if you have a curvy hourglass body, try high-waisted skirts and pants. This again draws back to the rule of thirds. When you wear a higher-waisted item, you're going to have a top one-third, bottom two-thirds proportion, and that is just visually appealing. But also, a higher-waisted item for a curvy figure is going to flatter your natural waist, which is higher than your regular waist. A regular waist is going to be about here, and we really want something that the waistband pinches in closer to the natural waist. Maybe pinch isn't a good word because that doesn't feel good. Um, nips it? No, nope, that's not it either. We want something that draws in the natural waist, and especially once you add that belt, it's going to accentuate the tiniest part of your waist. I'm not saying throw away all your regular waisted bottoms, but if your regular waist is down here, then your top is just going to be billowy right here where you want more of a drawn in figure at your waist. Number seven is do try mid thigh shorts. So number six was high-waisted shorts, number seven is mid-thigh shorts. This is in contrast to booty shorts or Bermuda shorts. I would say do not try either of those. Booty shorts are just um, very juvenile. They don't look very chic in your 30s, and Bermuda shorts just look better on these straight figures. I know we were seeing a lot of Bermuda shorts last couple of years on the runway, but keep in mind those models all have straight figures, not curvy. So if you have a curvy figure, I think Bermuda shorts are just not gonna be your best bet. I think high-waisted mid-thigh shorts are going to look the best on you because it's going to accentuate your waist and also be long enough to not cut you off at the widest part of your hips. But I know from asking on my Instagram that some women in their 30s do not like wearing shorts. So let me know down in the comments, are you someone who wears shorts or not? And if you're into a little bit of experimentation, try high-waisted mid-thigh shorts and let me know if you like them. Number eight is do wear structured shorts or mini skirts. Do not wear flowy lengths that are very short. 
There's a very obvious reason for this, and that's if you're sitting down, like let's say at a restaurant, your hem length is going to come up a lot shorter. So if you're already wearing something very short, then you're probably going to be revealing things you don't want to be. But secondarily, if you have a curvy body, that extra fabric that is flowy is going to create bulk at the hips. So we really want something that has a little bit more structure to it. Here's an example of some well-tailored shorts that I have. They are high-waisted, they're mid-thigh, and they're structured. So it creates a very good look all the way around. Moving on down the body, number nine is do show the tops of your feet. Especially with sandals, the more skin you can show at the top of your feet, the longer your legs are going to appear. What you don't want to do is cut your feet off at ankle length. The only time I do this is with sneakers and that's because I need the comfort and practicality of a sneaker. Let's say I'm walking around a lot that day, but my general summer wear always includes a pair of sandals that have a lot of the top of the foot exposed. Number 10 is do wear patterns with intention. You'll find in my closet a lot of bold patterns, especially bright colored florals. And I think the natural look of a flower that has its rounded edges really complements the shape of the curvy body. It also really goes with my personal aesthetic that I really like flowers and bright colors. What I would say do not wear when it comes to patterns is do not wear stripes. And the reason is that if you're wearing horizontal stripes, that is going to add width to your body. And if you're wearing vertical stripes, if you're curvy especially, the seams are not going to line up the stripes very well. So it's actually going to cheapen your look if those stripes aren't lined up well. The one exception I have to this is high-waisted wide leg pants. If you can get a really good tailored pair that have those vertical stripes, it's going to elongate your look, but that's kind of difficult to find. So I would say stick to patterns that have more of a rounded shape to them than those sharp, harsh lines. Okay, I promised you at the beginning of this video that the last two guidelines are going to be your mastery level of dressing a curvy body, so here it is. Number 11, do balance your silhouette with shoulder width, and you can either do this with colors or with fabric. If you're doing it with color, that generally means wearing black or a darker color on the bottom and wearing a brighter color up top to draw attention upwards. And if you're doing it with fabric, it can mean puff sleeves, flutter sleeves, or just any type of interesting strap detail on top. So here are a few examples of how I do this, and that's when I really want to accentuate the top half of my look. For example, when I'm making videos, you can't even see the bottom half of how I'm dressing. So I'm going to make sure that the top half of my look is more visually appealing. What you don't wanna do is add bulk to your waist and to your hips. So any kind of fluttery detail that happens at the waist or the hips, that's a no-go if you have a curvy shape. We really want to honor the curvy silhouette of your natural body. Number 12 is do emphasize your silhouette with either thinner straps on top, a strapless, or even a one shoulder top. What I don't want you to do is to be scared of your hips. And I see this a lot with curvy women who wear a lot of black or dark wash jeans and then bright colors up top. There's a time and a place for that, but there's also a time and a place to accentuate the curvature of your hips because it's really beautiful and unique. I hope these last two guidelines and really all 12 of these guidelines are really helpful for you as you get dressed in the mornings to flatter your hourglass figure. Let me know in the comments if there was one guideline that was particularly meaningful to you, or if you'd like me to elaborate on any, I can make a separate video for that. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I have a brand new video coming out every week on curating an intentional wardrobe in your 30s. I'll see you next week. Bye.